move. This will be his signature move as the general manager of the Chicago Bears, and that's drafting a, a quarterback first overall, first pick in the draft for consecutive seasons. We were talking about it, um, Tyler and I, or they were going through it. I, I don't remember. I think you have to go back to Andrew Luck to find a situation where a team with the first overall selection has as positive or enticing a landing spot for that first overall pick. And it, it goes back to, it's got to go back to Andrew Luck. People say, well, you traded up to get, uh, the Rams traded up to get Jared Goff. I, that team wasn't nearly as loaded as the, that Andrew Luck team, or it wasn't nearly as put together, I don't think, as, as this Bears team. So this is a really good landing spot for, for Caleb Williams if he is their pick. They were sure. The Rams were a seven-win team, but they probably didn't have the talent. They because didn't. the reason why the Colts were so bad is because Peyton Manning missed the whole right. year with a neck injury. Right. And then instead of electing to hope that Manning would get back to what he was, yeah. they just elected to reset with, with Andrew Luck, who again was... This this great college quarterback, and then they had to make the hard choice of trading Peyton Manning. Fan base divided. It's been that way now for quite some time. Uh, this was not a surprise uh, to most or to many. I'll, or I'll just speak from it. This was not a surprise. I thought ultimately this was going to be the decision that was made. Many clinged to the thought that this was all just some grand head fake. Um, People kept telling us at times, well, you guys just don't get it. They were never going to trade him. And I would respectfully re either just not respond or say, I, you know, I just disagree. I think that right. they are going to move. Um, that, 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 that's what was like so weird about it is these people were so sure. Yeah. And we've always been, look, anything's possible here. We think this is what's going to happen. We're not positive. Anything's possible, but the the a lot of these loud people yeah. were so sure that no, they're keeping it, guys. You're idiots. You're stupid. You don't see it. Your foot. Your 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 football knowledge is nothing. And like the people, there were so sure, and I just don't understand what fueled that. Sure and belligerent. That's, that's, what a, that's a weird combination. And, and it was and, and it's wrong on both aspects because you were factually wrong yeah. and you acted wrong. Yeah, I uh, look, I and the end of the day wasn't a surprise to me. I, I I feel about Justin the way that many do. He was a true professional throughout his entire time here, the three years. He was an excellent teammate. He was a hard worker. I have never heard anybody in this town talk about him in a negative light other than his performance just wasn't good, wasn't good consistently enough for them to move forward with him when they had the ability to select another quarterback who they felt had a higher ceiling first overall. Victim of circumstance and a victim of not being good enough consistently enough. And I've said it a million times, I'll say it a million and one. Dealt a bad hand, was not put in a great situation. But at the end of the day, you can be a victim of circumstance and also you can be one of the reasons why the decision to move on from you is made. Like, it's not as if he didn't have his faults. You know, in the last eight games of the season this year where everyone talked about the great improvement that he made, and I saw improvement from Justin. I thought Justin was a better quarterback at the end of this season than he was at the beginning of this season. I thought he was a better quarterback this year than he was last year. You, you realize, though, I know you do, I'm saying in general, they their offense had three games in the final eight games where they virtually had no scoring drives, touchdown drives. Now, you, some could argue that the Cleveland game, they scored an offensive touchdown. It took seven plays in one yard. They went scoreless basically the entirety of that game. They went scoreless without touchdowns against Minnesota and Green Bay. So where all this progress was made offensively, you still had three of your final eight games where your offense did not account for a touchdown. Do you know why that Cleveland game was such a Justin Fields nutshell game? Because because Joe Flacco threw for two twelve against you in the fourth quarter. Well, right, he was able to produce off the couch. But like in, in like in a nutshell, in that microcosm, it was such a good representation of what Justin Fields is because his one touchdown was spectacular. It was 
an incredible YouTube highlight of him spinning around and on the run, him throwing. It was Cole Komet in the corner of the it end was, zone. Yes. And he got away from Miles Garrett, arguably the best pass rusher in the league. Right. And then yeah. his two interceptions, I believe, weren't his fault no, either. No, they were both Hail Mary passes, right, right. which no one would hold those against. Right, right. So, like, again, two interceptions, not his fault. Dealt a bad hand. Only one touchdown, very short distance. No touchdown drives. Very little offensive production. The one touchdown was a spectacular highlight that people want to grab onto. But at the end of the day, there just isn't enough offense when he's your quarterback. And you the, have access to the number one overall pick, and you can draft a guy who you think is better. Right. So, like, again, even the negatives, I'll spin for him and say, those two interceptions, Darnell Mooney's got to catch that ball in the end zone on the Hail Mary. The inter and it ends up as an interception because it bounced off of him and ended in a Cleveland Browns. Didn't it end up in a Browns hand yes. for a second interception? Yes. And so, like, those aren't his fault either. But they didn't score. They you got to score. score against Cleveland. You got to score, and you've got to go on drives for that entire Look, game. I, I think, as you said, I, I mean, there are flashes. It was good. It wasn't good enough, consistently enough, to move forward when you have this asset at your disposal. It's really simple. Where it turned for me, I was always a Fields fan. P some people have find it hard to believe, whether they're new to the show or they just forgot where I was. When they drafted him 11th, I was so excited. I was so optimistic. I did not like Trubisky at all. I was out on Trubisky. I was out on Nagy. I hated the way they set up fields in his first year. Um, the second year, he made a lot out of what he wasn't dealt. I liked the way he ran and was very optimistic for the third year. So years one and two, I was so pro Justin Fields. When I walked into that first spring training and or the the, uh, the OTAs and then the training camp, and you'll remember some of these shows. People say it's only training camp, Sylvie. It's only training camp. The antenna went up when we watched without pass rush him holding the ball and holding the ball and holding the ball and not throwing the ball. And we'd sit back there and go, sack. That's another sack. And it came against the second team defense. And I would talk to some people up in that building and I'd say, is that the way it was supposed to look? And they said to me, no, the ball's supposed to be out. I go, that's second-team defense. And they said, we know. So I'd go back for another practice, holding the ball, holding the ball. And then there'd be one splash play to DJ Moore downfield. Sort of, again, a microcosm of what the season was. Locking on DJ, but when it came to the offense and getting the ball out the right way, it wouldn't happen. So my antenna was up going into the season. And then against the Packers. And then against Tampa. And then against nothing against Kansas City. And then, wait, where's the step? Where's the offensive step? And, and there were, every now and then there'd be splash plays. And then, like you said, at the end of the season, there'd be some growth, but then not a lot of touchdown drives. And to me, the, it just it wasn't good enough when you had the first overall pick staring in the face. We could all fall in love with the highlights. But but to me, I want one of those quarterbacks who can do it from the pocket and 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 go up and down the football field and make magic happen with his arm. You know, and and be a dual threat. Like I love dual threat quarterbacks, but what comes first on a dual threat? The arm. Yeah. Like that's the the job description. And he Steve just Steve Young was the one that's you know spoke to us. I thought in the most you know memorable way. He said, "Look, I think Steve actually told to us that had he continued to play the way he was playing in Tampa, he would have never made it. He would have been out of the league quickly." But Bill Walsh, when he got to San Francisco, said, "Look, this is great. We'll use this part of what you do, but unless you can function at a high level from the pocket as well." You're never going to get to where you you need to go. In our narrative, like people call them narratives, like I always call them opinions. Our narrative or opinion was always we wanted him to go out and wow polls and us and everyone so you didn't have to draft a quarterback. Right. Make it obvious 
And if any, there's not one person who ever could say it was obvious that he was the next guy. Anyone who did believe in him, it would be, well, he didn't play well because of Getze. He didn't play well because the Bears don't, uh, pr uh, don't develop quarterbacks. He didn't play well, but will play well. It was nothing of what he did. It was all projections. He didn't give you enough to put your job on the line to bypass the number one overall pick. Nope. And, and, and to bank on a, a high salary going forward to say, I believe in Justin going forward. And, and, and to me, their hands were tied and they have to, had to take a quarterback. And that's why this was an inevitable decision. Not good enough consistently enough for them to remain on the course they were on. It, to me, like I said... The evaluation process is probably very hard. The decision itself is not. The decision isn't. If you love the kid coming out in the draft, you draft it. If you're not sold on him, you can move forward with the guy you have and trade the pick. If you don't have a sh just a surefire thought that one of these guys in the draft is significantly better than the guy you have, then I'll, I'll buy the, the, the plan to stick with Justin for another year. But that's not how they felt up at Hallis Hall. And they gave us all of the, the signs that that's not how they, they felt. And I don't blame them because, again, you know, this is not the time and the place to, to tear him down. But it just wasn't, for the reasons I've mentioned over and over again, it wasn't good enough, consistently enough, to forego the opportunity to draft a quarterback with the first overall pick in a quarterback-rich draft it just wasn't yeah as far as the compensation and i know this is a sticking point for some i never thought it would be a sixth um i there was a time when i didn't believe it would be a fourth the way it's been going in the last week or two uh, maybe a fourth was something that i'd be happy with but at the start of this i it was a second round pick or bust for me i thought they would get a second round pick at the end of the day though you had to move on you couldn't this had to be solved and the way I'm looking at it is if, if Caleb Williams or whoever they end up drafting, if it's Jaden Daniels or Drake May, I think it's going to be Caleb. But if it's, if it's not, whoever the next quarterback's going to be, if the next quarterback hits and is going to be great, no one will remember what they got for, no. for, for Justin. You know what you'll remember? You'll remember that Ryan Poles pulled off one of the greatest trades in Chicago sports history. You won't remember that it was a sixth or a fourth. You'll remember that you got your next quarterback who's great and DJ Moore and Tyreek Stevenson and Darnell Wright and next year's second round pick from Carolina for CJ Stroud. Put it that way. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. Well, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I do. That's the trade that you'll remember. Sure. So if he, if he doesn't hit, you're going to you're going to bellyache because the quarterback wasn't acquired and you got nothing for Justin. But if the quarterback hits, this is going to be a footnote no matter what. It won't matter what you got for Justin in return. And look, I, I don't necessarily feel this was Ryan Poles overplaying his hand. I, I think the market kind of spoke. They knew the rest of the NFL knew that the Bears were, were, were locked in on drafting a quarterback first overall. Uh, they knew what jo Justin's contract situation is. You got to decide on in May whether or not to pick up the fifth year option. You know that you do have to tweak your offense a little bit to highlight his skill set. This was just a more difficult trade than probably many thought to start with. Um, I don't believe that this was him just settling on a sixth round pick, a conditional six with the Steelers when he could have taken a three or a four, but he just wanted to do right by Justin. Right. I think that narrative is silly because Ryan Poles' first obligation is to the Chicago Bears, and I don't believe that Ryan Poles, who wants to do right by Justin, would pass up on a third or fourth round pick if it was available with a different team and just send him to the Steelers for a conditional six because his people – wanted him to go to the Steelers. I just don't think that's the way business is done. But I do believe that this is a good spot for Justin and the fact that, that the, the Bears were able to facilitate a trade with the Pittsburgh Steelers is good. I think it, I think it works for Justin. Yeah, yeah, what, could they maybe have gotten like a guaranteed late fifth round pick? Maybe, but I don't, like I'm with you. I don't think they could have gotten like some, a grand thing that they've turned down because they quote, like this this quote 
want to do right by Justin has really gotten a lot of play. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I don't, I don't, I don't believe that they. I think what they wanted to do was move him before you get to the draft or you get to mini camp, where you would find yourself in an environment where you have the first overall selection. It'd be a quarterback, and he's in camp with Justin in a mini camp. I don't think they wanted that. I wouldn't have wanted that. That's the thing that I'm most happy about in terms of as a Bears fan, not reveling in anybody being traded. It's that I was vehemently against having both of them in camp at the same time, even for Me a too, mini yeah, camp. Yeah. I just didn't think it was good for anybody. No, you got to move we documented on. A, a thousand times, not good for Justin, not good for the team, not good for Caleb Williams, not good for Ryan Poles, not good for anybody. Not good for Iberflus to manage Nobody. it. Nobody. The not coordinator. Not good for Shane Gl- New Wait, Waldron. I mean, Installing a new offense. Yes. Um, like, and then again, like, did the Bears hurt themselves because they told everyone they wanted to trade Justin? I don't think so. If the Bears told everyone they wanted to trade the number one overall pick today, would they have a line out the door call, of people calling them? Absolutely. Why? Because it's valuable. Okay. So Va- they, they very told them, valuable. So they told everyone Justin was available. Right. Why didn't they get what they wanted? Because he's not as valuable to the league as some people believed he would be. They, they were trading a backup quarterback. Right. They get a six-round pick for a backup quarterback right now. Right. He's Russell Wilson's backup. Yes. And if he's not, they'll get a fourth-round pick for him. Like, it, this, all the overthinking about did, did, did they ruin their value because they told people. If Justin Fields was wanted by more than one team, they would have gotten more for him. Of course they would. He wasn't wanted. He... Nobody wanted to make him their plan to be their starting quarterback. The Bears or any other team, not now. If they did, they would have happily paid for him. But they didn't. No. It, it, it's just a fact. It was, the Bears didn't hurt this. Maybe the Bears could have kept him for longer and maybe if someone got hurt. But like Waddle and I both said, we didn't think that's good for the Bears. We didn't think that helps the Bears. Maybe it would have helped their draft stock. I don't think you win the war that way. You may have won the battle for the compensation. Again, if the next quarterback hits, the compensation for Justin is a footnote. Yes. All you care about is is if your next quarterback is a star and you're winning games. Now get it right. Now you got to get the right right. guy and develop him. I believe that is Caleb Williams. Now they have the opportunity to develop him. And as I said earlier, if it is Caleb Williams – He's coming into an environment, I think, that is more advantageous than any other number one quarterback who has stepped into an environment as the number one overall selection, going back to Andrew Luck. What Ryan Poles has done, and he's made mistakes, but if you look at what Ryan Poles has done from his first year to where they are now, it's not without blemishes, but it's, it, it, it's a pretty good setup. They've made a lot of strides in a short period of time, and they've, he talked to us about infrastructure. What was important that you learned from the Kansas City Chiefs, Chiefs experience with, with scouting Patrick Mahomes, drafting Patrick Mahomes, and developing Patrick Mahomes? And the word that I always kind of was clinging to when he said it was infrastructure. Think of the infrastructure you have right now for a young first overall pick quarterback. You've added your offensive line. I would still like to see them fortify your offensive line, okay? But but it's gotten better. You've got a combination of DJ Moore and Keenan Allen. You've got Cole Komet and Gerald Everett. You've got a nice combination of different running backs. For a guy that's drafted first overall who normally goes to a three-win team, they're stepping into an environment that I think is, is set up pretty nicely for them going forward. I'm not guaranteeing you an NFC title. I'm not guaranteeing you a trip to the Super Bowl. What I am saying is, is, is the table is set for them to be above average. Now you got to develop. Yeah, for the first time in a long time. All right, a lot there from Waddle and me uh, on our thoughts on what happened over the weekend. Give us your thoughts. When you found the news, what was your first reaction? What was your biggest emotional reaction? You read on Twitter. You get a text from your buddy. Justin Fields traded for a conditional six-round pick. You thought what? And what is your emotion now um, on, on Justin Fields' era being over? It was short, three years, and now going forward, what are your thoughts?